this week on CrossFeed. Jesus versus the vampires. Jesus saves the pilots. Atheist camp. First communion extravagance. And Beyonce, too famous for church. Welcome, everybody, from beautiful Massachusetts. I am Dr. Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church out here in Dedham in gorgeous New England. And I am Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in wet and rainy once again, Delaware, Iowa. No tornadoes this time, just flood warnings, because we haven't had quite enough flooding around here. Oh. So you guys are getting poured on. We're just having gorgeous weather out here. Yeah. Yeah, things have finally let up. I think we'll be all right. You know, last week, you know, we went the whole thing without uh, without losing power. Five minutes after we were done, the power went out. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we cleaned. Uh, no, I've been spending the last two days cleaning out my swimming pool. Getting all the leaves out of it and stuff, and the water's a gorgeous blue. It's just about 65, that's all. It's freezing <laughs> cold. By the way, I have to, I, and I, I didn't even, I forgot to write down his name. Um, the guy that created Davy and Goliath um, Art passed away. There you go. He passed away this week. And uh, Also so, created uh, Gumby. What was that the same was was that the guy that I I didn't I don't know if it was if it was the the guy that created it or if if it was I don't know if it was the same guy anyway let's look it up on crossfeed the story's there Rich Sutcliffe there we go was the creator and executive producer Davy and Goliath. Okay. Okay, well, you said create. I didn't, yeah, yeah. Art Cloakie was the animator. There you go. So, um, the, the world is a little bit poorer now, but uh, heaven's a little bit richer. So, I figure we're not going to do a whole story on that, but um, worth mentioning because it was a great show, pretty influential. Very influential. It's a great kid's show. I used to watch it. Um, My kids still do. Uh, oh, do they? Yeah, it's on like CBN or something like that. Update. Speaking of uh, stories and last uh, uh, stories and things, last week we talked about the ruling in California on gay marriage, mm-hmm. and I talked about how uh, you know they would get people would get married there and then go to other states, to, you know, and require them to recognize it. Well, interestingly enough, of course, if you read the papers, uh, I think it was just today, the governor mm-hmm. of New York, by executive order, is passing that they be recognized, those marriages be recognized in New York State. So now the uh, entire state, of, so the people in New York, not even given a chance to vote on it or look at it or anything, are being forced to accept a ruling out of California. So, you know, I remember contacting. Um, one of my legislators, oh, a few years ago, and um, in fact, uh, it was uh, Jim Nussel who ended up running for um, for governor and losing. And I said, uh, you know, what do you what do you think about a um, a constitutional amendment? And he said, it's not necessary. Well, guess what? <laughs> if there was ever a time that a constitutional constitutional amendment defining marriages between one man and one woman is necessary, now is the time. Uh, that would take care of the FLDS, uh, and it would also take care of this whole um, gay marriage thing. Mm-hmm. But it was an interesting thing to me that uh, I mean, the governor just, just, just ordered it. Here it is. Uh, well, it's because he knew that if he left it up to the voters, it wouldn't happen. That's true. Well, the other bit of news, I don't know what they're going to decide, but uh, the uh, 
Because June 17th is supposed to be the date when gay marriage is allowed in uh, California. Um, <clears throat> a uh, ruling, a, a, a group uh, fighting against it has asked the California Supreme Court to stay their decision until after Election Day. To say, you know, hmm. you know it's going to come up, it's going to be, you know, an amendment would be voted on to overrule, which will overrule this. Uh, it would cause a lot of confusion if it's allowed for five months. Yeah, big time. So, or actually four and a half. So would you well, stay your decision until after election day, and then we'll find out what the, the final result of this is. That makes sense, instead of, you know, kind of opening the barn doors and then trying to shut them again. Right. Make a lot of sense, so. Mm-hmm. Just to bring that up real quick. Well, Wands are dealing with um, I don't know which 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 <laughs> of these should we go with? Okay, well let's do the let's do the vampires last um, because the the images I have are a little bit graphic. Uh, so uh, let's do that one last, and that way. If, People don't want to, especially those who are watching the video, don't want to see that. They can just stop watching then instead of trying to fast forward through okay. it. Well, let, let's deal with the question of how famous are you to go to church? Okay. Let's talk about Beyonce here. I love this picture. She looks like Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have just left her with uh, the vampires. You could have gone from Bride of Frankenstein <laughs> to the vampires. <laughs> We have, we have a full circle transition. Uh, yeah, transition already. <laughs> that's right. But uh, let's let's. Oh my god, that's a great picture. I thought this was kind of interesting. She just talked about how um, when she goes to church, she gets mobbed, and so she decided, I just don't want to go anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, people come up to me at church during the sermon. Uh, you know, people watch everything I do. They come up, take pictures on their mobile phones. Uh, they're nice, but you know, I think God understands if I miss Sunday service. You know, I mean, I can understand her where she's coming from. Not only is I think is it you know hard for her, but it's got to be distracting for the the congregation to have this person you know come in there. Hmm. Yeah, I. You know, I, for if I were the pastor of that church, I would say you know I'd say hey look. You know, she has the right to not be pestered, um, you know, and, and be treated as any one, any other of God's children, you know, and, and not treated like this. You know, how would you feel if you were coming to church and, and you were treated like that? If they couldn't get it under control, which, especially if you've got all these, uh, paparazzi and stuff like that that keep coming in, um, and and you're having a hard time keeping them out, don't want to have to have, you know, bouncers or something. Um, then, yeah, I, I guess at, the, at that point, I'd put her on my shut-in list, which sounds kind of weird for since she's, you know, kind of bobbing all over the world, but, um, you know, and say, you know, I will will, will bring you, um, you know, uh, a videotape or, you know, DVD or whatever, of the service, um, and, uh, bring you communion if, you know, depending on what her, uh, denomination is and, and that kind of thing. And, 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 you know, just kind of treat her like a shut in there or anybody else that, you know, I've got members that are not necessarily shut ins, but for various reasons can't come to church on Sunday mornings. And, uh, and so I just kind of put them on my shut in list and, and, you know, bring the service to them if they can't come to it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wonder, and, and maybe one of our, our listeners out there is in a church that has someone, quote, famous, unquote, in, in the service. Yeah, how do they handle that? You know, I think like uh, back in the 1970s when Tom Landry was, uh, you know, coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, how did his ch- church handle him going to church in Dallas on a Sunday morning? Um, mm-hmm. How do you handle well, you know, that kind of stuff? I think in some cases, like uh, for instance, um, the church that I vicared at had a um, one of the Packers was a member, and um, or uh, I think at that point he was. Uh, wait a minute. 
No, I'm sorry. It was, uh, no, he was a member of a different church there in Green Bay. But he would go to the, he was involved in the Lutheran uh, high school there. Um, but it was, we, we had a guy that was, that had been signed to them, but he got injured in training camp. But, you know, I, I think with, with a lot of, of celebrities, especially like coaches and stuff like that, um, you know, people get to meet him and that, and, and then you just, you get to know him and you, and you treat him like a person. And, um, you know, you see like when, um, uh, politicians, mm-hmm. uh, especially like the president and stuff like that, you know, he's surrounded by secret service so he can go. But, you know, even then you'll get, like, I, I saw, what was it, story last week, I think, or, or two weeks ago where Hillary, um, went to church and it like it gave an outline of the pastor's sermon in the article it was kind of ironic because the whole thing was about adultery and it didn't say anything about bill being at the service <laughs> but uh, the, but it also said that the pastor didn't know that she was coming when he wrote the sermon and prepared the service so. <laughs> but you know in those cases you got secret service and they'll they'll keep the paparazzi at bay you know um but you see pictures of of them, you know, pre, uh, attending services and stuff like right. that, and um, you know, then you just have security. So, yeah, in some cases, people just get to know them, and and the press, you know, they're not the kind of people that the press is going to chase around. But with Beyonce, you know, she's a rock star, and that's that's completely different. You know, that's a whole different kind of famous, because that's the kind of famous that attracts um, screaming fans. And it tracks the kind of people that are going to sneak up on you with their um, cell phone cameras and, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'd be really curious if, if any of you out there do have someone famous at your church. You don't even have to say who it is if you want to protect their identities or you don't have to say where you're from or anything like that. Um, but we would be curious how that's handled if you do have someone like that. I, I had a friend of mine... Um on his vicarage in California, uh, Mark Leonard played Starrick in Star Trek was a member of his church. And I often used to joke, you know, do you have 30 million Trekkies showing up at the door? He said, no, not really. He says, uh, cause this guy's just kind of really quiet about what he does and stuff. Uh, but, uh, he said that, 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 but that was about the only thing he ever did. I, I think she's got a point. I don't know what it would be like to, to be famous. I, I, I hate to be famous personally. Mm-hmm. I think I get all the fame I can handle doing this podcast. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about <laughs> massive fame. <laughs> I don't think we do either. Uh, but now, okay, so she gets all these paparazzi and stuff showing up for church. But what about people who are, you know, trying to bring the paparazzi in or really trying to do things up? Yeah, this is um, from the about the Irish Catholic Church. Now, but it's not just about the Irish Catholic Church, honestly. No, it isn't. But it's it's coming to be new and out there because um, uh, it, it, Ireland is experiencing this now for the first time because uh, you know it's it's having a, a, for fourteen years they've had economic growth and so now there's this problem with first communion. Suddenly, these kids are showing up in, you know, five hundred dollar suits. Uh, this one guy said that he, uh, what is it? He, uh, uh, he has tailor four tailors working twelve hours a day, seven days a week, preparing suits for kids for the first communion. But you're absolutely mm-hmm. right. I mean, this is this is a problem. I mean, I see it here in, in up here in Massachusetts all the time. With uh, I don't think we have five hundred dollar suits on kids. Um, here in Iowa, but um, we don't do we don't. I don't think Iowa. I see the five hundred dollars suits, but I do see the big parties and the lavish things like that. Yeah, yeah, they're talking about parents spending over four thousand euros, which is significantly more in American dollars. It's probably about what six thousand American dollars, something like that. Yes, because our government has not strengthened the dollar, <laughs> which is another topic for a different show. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, stretch limos and um, James Bond-style suits, 
and uh, French uh, manicures and yeah, hiring traps with little uh, Shetland ponies. Uh, so one person had a reception with a string quartet, uh, and people even going into debt. Well, yeah, because it's uh, keeping up with the Joneses right. or the O Joneses. Uh, it's Ireland. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, restaurant bills as much as a thousand euros. Yeah. That's so in one the, place the has is, uh, a lunch for nineteen ninety five euros per person. And they have as many as 180 diners. And the next time you feel like showing off, don't. Yeah. And, of course, highlights in the hair. Oh, yeah. Highlights in the hair. And, of course, money. Uh, 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 this is one guy says, it's much bigger now than I was a kid. They get a hell of a lot more money now. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. I kind of like okay. this quote. Uh, it says, the mother's goal for the whole shebang. They want to look amazing. You know, so it was a quote that I heard once. It was, um, your your wedding will look exactly the way that your mother-in-law imagined hers. <laughs> you know, it's the whole idea that it's the, the parents, you know, it's it's really about the parents. And, right. and right. it's a competition of saying, look how extravagant I can be and stuff like that. And it completely misses the point of what it's all about. But at the same time, you know, we can look at this and, you know, and shake our heads and, you know, point our fingers and go, oh, that's, that's horrible. They're, they're completely missing the point. All right. Let's take a look at most American weddings. I mean, same thing. I'm a big fan of money. I like it. I use it. Yeah, it is. Is my sound any better now? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Okay, I'm trying a, a, a microphone instead of the, the, just the audio. Cause I, I, was hearing, I was hearing it, it was really tinny. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, weddings, have, like I've heard pastors that say I'd rather do ten weddings or ten funerals than one wedding. Because the weddings are all about, um, you know, it's it's all about the the show and the, you know, um, you you stand and face the bride, the same way that you stand and face a processional cross, you know. Who are we worshiping here? Well, the bride is supposed to be representative of the church at that time. Sure. So, well, there, 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 there's some understanding behind it, but. No, in my mind, it's a... How many uh, people know that? Uh, probably none. I, although I explained it to the the, the, the the wedding party the night before. Um, I mean, I've had some people, you know, and the wedding is just, the, you know, it is that. We've got a wedding coming up where they're going to have a very nice reception, I guarantee you. Uh, they're both very well educated, have a lot of money, but... Boy, I tell you, they, do they ever want to have a, a worshipful wedding service? Uh, yeah. They really want to focus this, this, this whole wedding on, uh, on their faith in Christ and, uh, they want that to be known. And they've made it very clear to me that's, that's to be the center of that time in the church. Great. Yeah, we worked How hard. wonderful and rare. Actually, it hasn't been too rare up here for me. I've been pretty fortunate up here, I think. Well, I, sw I can't speak a whole lot because I haven't done a wedding in. Well, okay, put it this way: I've been here almost seven years. I've done two weddings. One was an affirmation of a civil ceremony. The other one was um, just just over a year ago, and it was outside in the grandparents' backyard because they had, they have this lake in their backyard and and on the backdrop of the lake and everything. Um, but I. I've never done a, an actual wedding in the church. I have two weddings in seven years. I've done a so. few of them. I've done a couple of them up here, and we've had nice receptions. And it's always fun, though, when I, you get a couple that really cares. But back to our, our, our first communion. Okay, so now your daughter was confirmed this year. What mm -hmm. did you guys do for your daughter's confirmation? Did you have any kind of party or celebration or anything? 
we had the family over and made, uh, we had brats and burgers on the grill, you know, and I'm trying to remember what we did. It was nothing fancy. It was just family get together. Yeah. For our bright kids, we always went out to eat. We let the kids choose where they wanted to go, uh, and who they wanted to invite. And so we go out to eat to celebrate that, their, their confirmations. Um, now I went to, now this year, I wasn't invited to anybody's house. Uh, last year, one of our kids, uh, they had a very nice reception for him, uh, at the, at the house. It was great for you to come think of it. Yeah. I haven't been invited to that many, um, I probably would have been invited to one this year. Um, there was one of the other families I, they would have invited us, I'm sure, but they knew that, um, that we were going to be busy already. Um, I haven't been invited to all that many. I mean, a few, you know, but, uh, not a lot. I mean, I, I, I mean, this strikes us as being very elaborate and maybe a little bit over, but, uh, you know, I mean, for these kids, I mean, this is a big event in, the, in their lives. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm glad to see they're making it a big deal. What's What's interesting to me, though, is, too, is how the church is fighting back. They tried to bring the focus back to what the purpose is. Uh, doing the First Communion on Sunday so that, you know, they can't go out and have the party quite so easily. Or uh, trying to have a reception afterwards uh, so that, you know, there's not that need to go out and, and have this big celebration again. Right. Looks like I'm losing my background. Yeah, it is. It's stuff it is. Uh, Sun's going down. And Let me uh, reset this. some of the churches are are, are wearing Hold on a robes. Second. Let me reset this. Sure. I'll go ahead and talk anyway. But he's back. Uh, and some of the churches are having the kids wear robes, so you don't see the great big fancy dress and every you know it's fancy clothes. So why go out and spend five hundred dollars on an outfit that nobody's going to be able to see because it's got a robe covering up anyway. Yeah. Yeah, good point. And we got my daughter a, a new dress. Um, but it was nothing fancy. I mean, you know, we got it at like Target or something like that, you know. It so, didn't cost you a couple thousand? No, it didn't even cost a hundred. <laughs> so So and it was about the only one in the store that fit her. <laughs> She's really skinny, it's really hard to find stuff that fits her. And tall. I don't know where she gets it. Uh, except maybe the fa- I suppose you don't get it on the show. I'm six foot four, so uh, my kids are all kind of tall and skinny. I'm just are you tall. really six foot four? Yeah. I suppose you've never seen me either. <laughs> God, you stand seven inches taller than I am. No, we never stood in each other's presence. And you didn't play basketball or anything, huh? No, in fact, I have a T-shirt that says, no, I don't play basketball. I played basketball in seventh grade, sat on the bench most of the time, and um, I, I can't shoot to save my life. I, I'm okay at the rebound, um, but I can't. My vertical leap stinks too. So um, no, I I, I kind of doctor said I grew too fast uh, to, and I, I had no coordination because my uh, sense of balance couldn't keep up with my um, the speed at which my body was growing, and uh, so. I got into uh, books and uh, more creative things, art and stuff like that instead. Being a geek instead. Okay, I understand. <laughs> My roommate in high school was the same way. He, he grew too fast and uh, he uh, had struggled. He, he did try playing basketball our junior year and he just, yeah, he'd scare the team because, you know, he was six foot four. But it didn't take me long to realize this guy couldn't shoot a basket. <laughs> Life depended on. Mm-hmm. So he did make one basket for the year. Um, so if uh, Jim Myers is watching this thing, go for it. Um, let's see. Well, let's do. Let's jump over to to, 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 to the praying pilots here. And, you know, probably you know playing games. You would pray the ball would go in. Um, <laughs> have uh, New Zealand pilot Owen Wilson, and uh, he told his passenger, Grant Stubbs, a uh, petrol station, a gas station owner, to pray 
as they desperately tried to find a place to land because they ran out of fuel in mid-flight. And so they landed, and and if you can if you're watching the video, you can kind of see the picture in the background. It's a pretty hilly area. And they landed right next to a big old sign that said, Jesus is Lord. So here they are praying, you know, God, save us, save us, you know, help us to to land safely, help us survive. And they land next to a big sign that says, Jesus is Lord. It's like, any question about how you landed safely? <laughs> Your prayer has been answered, and the answer has a signature on it. <laughs> They, uh, yeah, if you look at the picture, yeah, it looks like there's just one flat spot, and they got onto it, and um, it's run by a Christian couple. It's a, a ranch, and they are uh, met by emus, goats, deers, wild horses, and donkeys. Oh, that is nasty! Yeah, and the the, the passenger, it says, he saw the irony of having 200,000 liters of petrol and gas at his work but none with him in the sky <laughs> his gas station owner ran out of gas <laughs> why is that funny i don't know but uh i, I thought this was a cool set you know, this is one of those things you know, we've had the you go to crossfeed and there's a million of these uh you know jesus face on the doggy door and jesus face on the um you know on this and that and and, and and there's all these kind of strange, uh, kind of where you looking for God kind of things. And, but, you know, and then you run into something like this. And you, you look at those other things and you go, well, is that Jesus in the ultrasound picture? And, you know, and, and what does that mean? You know, and, and you go, okay, well, even if it is, what, what, what are you, what are you going to read into it? And how do you know it's Jesus and not Jerry Garcia? You know, and, um, so, so then it's, it's like, uh, you know, you get something like this, and you go, well, it's just coincidence, you know. And, wow, that's a pretty good coincidence, though, <laughs> you know. I mean, when plane lands like that on that tiny little spot, and it just, you know, just happened to find a place to land, and, and they landed all safely and everything, and it just happens to be next to this big sign, that's a pretty good coincidence, yeah, it's a really good, uh, 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 uh very good, uh, coincidence there. And, uh, glad to see it. And glad that they, uh, landed safely. Yeah. I've, I've heard this quote, um, coincidence is when God does something and doesn't take the credit for it. <laughs> or maybe it doesn't get the credit for it. So, hmm. eh. So, Coincidence is a nice point. But I can tell you, there are certain people that would definitely say that it's coincidence. Yes. And those would be the people at Camp Quest. Uh, Camp Quest is its actually a string of, of camps. There's more than just one. There's like five or six of them. And uh, it is a camp for atheists and agnostics. Or as it says behind Dale there, the secular summer camp. Scientific jargon staggers me, Pinky. So, um, you know, there's lots of secular summer camps out there. But this one is a specifically secular, as in anti-religious, summer camp. So, you know, this is, uh, this really, it, it doesn't surprise me, but it's something that I never really thought about before. You know, I went to, I met my wife at a, um, at a Christian summer camp. And, um, and my kids go to a Christian summer camp and they love it. And, and I, I can't imagine, um, you know, I know there's like YMCA camps and, oh, well, I went to a Boy Scout camp when I was, um, when I was a kid and, and that, but, uh, they're, the, you know, the, I, I love the, the Christian camps. Because it was just, it was really a place where you could go and, and, uh, for the most part, there wasn't a lot of kind of clicks and, and stuff like that. And, um, people accepted each other and it was a place where you could find other people that share your faith, you know? So, you know, it was, a, it was, it was a great, really great experience. I am, by the way, speaking of camps, going to be the featured speaker for a week 
at uh, the New England Lutheran Outdoor Ministry Camp in Pittsburgh, Massachusetts, in July. Ooh. Cool. So uh, I'm I'm the speaker for the Senior High Week. I'll be up there with a bunch cool. of about twenty to thirty senior high school students for the week. Um, the camp in Iowa has been trying to get me to come up, but I have to, I'd have to give up a week of vacation to do it, and for me to give up a week of vacation to spend it working. <laughs> okay, because you know. my congregation says that they're really kind of into this camp. A lot of people here. Uh, one of my predecessor pastors and his wife were very involved in it and uh, growing up. And then we've had you know several members here who have gone to it. One of my elders, his daughter, is on the board of directors of it now. She was up there a lot growing up as a kid. And they're all like, you know, this is part of your service outside the congregation. Um, hmm. They believe in That's cool. tithing my time to the greater church. So they're all like, you know, this is just the you know. And I said, well, you want me to take a week vacation for it? You're working. <laughs> so I, you know, I just, I just, you know, to hear a church say, no, no, yeah, if you want to, you know, serve the greater church in this way, you got to take vacation time. I don't know if I'll we'll preach that week. I mean, I'm going to have to, you know, I don't want to have time to work on the sermon and stuff. I'll, I'll take it. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, to me, it's, you know, they, they, my congregation is very big into to, to service outside the congregation and to believe it's important for me to do. Uh, I believe. And you tell your congregation this for me that every church in the synod should tie their pa- tie their pastor's time to the greater church, uh, and uh, that that way we can be in, in service to the greater um, church, to to, our, to a greater community. Um, because as we give up our of our time, it gives us the opportunity then I think to build up people. In the wider community, so uh, that's a neat idea. I've always believed that, and but it's funny because sometimes it's, some people say, you know, well, it's because I'm secretary of our district and I, I teach in the Delta program, and I do a couple other things, you know, and they're like, why do you do all this? And I'm like, Nobody else is. Other because other churches won't let their pastors. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, me, I've been able to. But anyhow, back to this camp. Not so Christian of a place. Um, find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. On the one hand, the, the guy the guy says, "Well, you're not required to be an atheist." Uh, you know, we're, we're trying not to label when kids eight or ten. You know, we don't want them to say, you know, I'm an atheist or I'm a Catholic. That's too young to make a world think about the worldview. Uh, on the other hand, it's based by, it's, it's supported by uh, the Humanist Studies, a think tank for non-religious humanist philosophy, which emphasizes science, evolution, compassion, and critical thinking. Uh, during mealtime, the, the, the kids learn about free thinkers through history. Lance Armstrong, Isaac Asimov, Susan Booth, Anthony, Frederick Douglass, Alice Walker, uh, author of The Color of Purple. Um, they, uh, you know, uh, learn about evolution and things. Uh, they they talk about uh, uh, you know uh, they have one thing, one exercise, and you know they, the kid. They say there's a, there's a dragon. There's some unicorns. They're all invisible. Have proof they don't exist. Well, which is pretty obviously supposed to be you know preparing them for the idea that God doesn't exist. Right. Right. So. Here's the thing. This is just as much, even though they call it a non-religious summer camp, this is very much a religious summer camp. Yes, it is. And this, I mean, this is organized religion. You don't have to have, you know, you don't have to believe in a god to have an organized religion. Buddhists, most Buddhists don't believe necessarily in a god. Uh, depends how Hindu their Buddhism is. But, um, but, you know, most, the Buddhists at least leave the question of the existence of God or God's nature open. All right. And, and, and they don't really even answer the question. Uh, so, you know, they would fit in here. Okay. But, um, but this is definitely, uh, uh this is, this is a uh, indoctrination. Right. Well, <laughs> and, uh, is, is that their logo behind you? Yeah. 
Okay. It's the, uh, pulled it off their website. Right, okay. I mean, here it is, you know, even, even going out of their way to call themselves the secular summer camp. Mm hmm. Yeah. I know a lot of YMCAs do secular summer camps. Uh, right. I mean, uh. Even though it's Young Men's Christian Organization. Yeah. Or but association. They, they really kind of lost their, 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 their Christian background. Um, right. Although one time they were very much. Dwight Moody was, uh, preached through YMCA, but they've lost that affiliation. Um, a friend of mine was a, uh, uh, actually former music director here at, here at St. Luke's, uh, took part in a, uh, summer camp up in Western Massachusetts. It was, it was supposed to be Jewish in its background. I think way back when it had some Jewish connections, but a lot of kids were there were still Jewish, but it's really, you know, there was nothing religious going on at all about the whole camp. I mean, there are a lot of camps out there that kids just go to and enjoy. Aren't necessarily, you know, uh, uh, anything. Yeah. But to say, you know, to, to go out and emphasize, we are the secular summer camp. Uh, well, you know, the that, other thing right is, there it says if, what your, it's all your about, stuff. Yeah, it's all about free thinkers, right? Okay, but there's that's only if you think the way they do. Mm -hmm. That's the whole definition of uh, having an open mind, that it's open as long as you agree with what I say. So, you know, this is as much checking your brain at the door as the Jesus camp that we talked about a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Well, like we said, you know, I mean, well, you're sitting there, you know, you know, having this obvious metaphor for God, these invisible animals. You know, I mean, okay, right there, you, you know, and if one of the kids made the connection and said, but, you know, just because you can't see him doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. Um, yeah. I've never seen a million dollars. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I've never seen your brain. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> Jury's still out on that one. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, there's an indoctrination here. I, mean, I can imagine now. I mean, when the girl said, you know, she, she went to this and she didn't feel so alone now because, you know, it was kind of neat to find there were other kids out there who didn't believe in anything either. And I can imagine that, in that sense, yeah, it's probably kind of a nice thing to know. But, um, but here again, you've got a bunch of kids who don't believe something. Again, you're being really kind of, it's more of an indoctrination rather than have a, a whole different group of kids who may or may not believe something. Right. You know, and, and here's what it comes down to, all right? Like I said, I attended Christian camps. I send my kids to Christian camps. I indoctrinate my kids, all right? <laughs> okay? I teach them what we believe, all right? I teach them what I believe to be the truth. And frankly, I believe that that's my job as a parent to teach my understanding of the truth to my kids, whether it be religion, whether it be, um, you know, any, you know, morality, whatever, or, or how to cut an apple for that matter, you know. And, you know, and, but I also teach them how to think and how to, to question and, and, and things like that. And I allow questions. And, you know, so what it comes down to is, I don't have a problem with these camps, all right? If I, just like, you know, there's Muslim camps, there's Jewish camps, there's, you know, there's camps with all kinds of religions. Just don't say it's not religious, because it is very much a religion. Right. It's, it's as religious as the camps that I attended. Right. Or don't say that, that this is this is the place where you can think freely and, and go to think freely and, and things. When, no, they've got a bias. Right. Just, just, yeah. just be honest. If be a Christian honest. kid goes there... How is he going to be treated? Right. You know, I mean, and quite frankly, and okay, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a, 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 it's probably a, a biased generalization. Okay. But I'd be really curious how a Christian kid would be treated at one of these compared to an atheist kid at a Christian camp. Well, I can see that an atheist kid at a Christian camp being treated pretty brutally. Um. Could be. I mean, we've, but, you know, when I was a camp counselor, there were definitely kids that had some pretty serious questions. I don't know if they were flat-out atheists, you know, 
But at that age, they're still figuring stuff out, you know. And and I had some kids that were really, at least had very little understanding of what Christianity really was, you know. Yeah, so, but on the other hand, I can think of, you know, there's a case a few years ago down in Alabama, and this person sued to stop praying in the public schools. The person who happened to sue, what's happened is the parents have to lose countenance in Lutheran. Uh, it had this real problem with this, you know, the Baptists leading their kids in prayer. And, uh, cause you know, it's condescended, they have done such understanding of prayer fellowship. I think, and the family was attacked as being atheists and everything else. Yeah, you know, and it was, you know, that wasn't the issue at all. So yeah, I think if some kid going to a Christian camp opened up and says, you know, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in anything. I, the one I went to, I could see some kids getting in the kid's face. Yeah. And, I think it would depend on the camp. It would depend a lot on the counselors, too. And, you know, how, you know, the maturity of the counselors, um, I think it would vary considerably. You know, you talk about, like, that, that Jesus camp that was in the documentary. I would see that one being very different from the camps that I attended. Because we had kids going to those camps from all over the place. And we had, we definitely had people there. Um, that that were not Christians and didn't claim to be Christian. Um, and you know, so I, we certainly spent a lot of time talking to them about Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta expect that at a Christian camp, but you know, we went out of our way to to show them God's love. But at the same time, they weren't like outspoken. You know, I don't believe in Jesus or something like that. You know, right? It was. Their parents sent them because they thought it'd be a, um, you know, they like the horse program or something. I don't know, you know, but um, felt so. needs. Which camp did you work mm-hmm. at, by the way? Camp Luisimo in South Wisconsin. I've done a lot of things you don't know about. Good camp. Okay, well, let's go to our last story then. Um, All right, before I switch the background. Which uh, I, w- I have to say, I was very upset that I didn't see the story because I am on uh, the comic book resources website every day reading about comic books. Especially <laughs> looking, right. it's a great place to find out about updates on comic books that are becoming movies and stuff. So I was really upset with myself. I'm like, I don't want to know I see this story. I'm going to switch the background. Um, right. This thing's about vampires, right? Three, and I'm going to throw. Two, I'm, I'm, <laughs> one. You're warned. Background. It's black. Here's the, I'm, yeah, I'm putting the trailer up behind me. So, um, which is it's a uh, the the sound is is negligible. But what we have here is the uh, loaded Bible. And it's uh, being made into a movie. It's a, a, a trade paperback from a, a series. And it's a post-apocalyptic city, or post-apocalyptic uh, world. And so you have these vampires uh, taking over everywhere. And there's only one guy that can stop the vampires. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so... We've got uh, Jesus uh, basically going around and attacking vampires. He's got a sword. and um, It's kind of goofy. I mean, you know, really. But, you know, here's my question. Is this, you know, how, how, how should we as Christians react to this? Should we be offended? Um, should we, you know, there's the cover art. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It says, uh, 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 when vampires invade the last surviving stranglehold of New Vatican City, the church turns to their deadliest weapon, the clone of Jesus. This is madness. So... So yeah, it's not Jesus, it's his clone, you know. That's that's a story that's been done before. See, cuz you can do a Jurassic Park thing with the uh Shroud of Turin 
um, assuming that the Shroud of Turin is authentic. And if you could somehow uh, manage to uh, scrape off some DNA off of there that it uh, survived somehow, you'd have to get it out of a red blood cells don't have um, nucleuses. You'd have to get it off of a white blood cell or some other cell, skin cell or something like that. Um, you know, it's well, it's well they supplement it with frog with, with, with frog DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Obscure joke. Talk to your parents. Well, they could you know probably supplement it with um 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 um, um Dan Brown's DNA. I have no idea what that meant. So. I don't know. I, you know, there's there's been a number of of different uh, comic books, especially where I've seen Jesus used as a character. Uh, some of them take kind of a South Park approach, and they just, you know, they're irreverent in the extreme. To you know, to they just sort of make a mockery of him. Um, to the point that he's absolutely besides the name and and uh, uh, theoretical picture. Uh, since we don't really know what he looked like, um, there's really no resemblance to the real thing. Um, that's remember, pretty much the case here. I remember Jesus existing in the comic book Ghost Rider when I used to read that in high school. Um, you know, it's bringing um, Johnny Blaze from from, from from Satan's power. Um, you know, actually, I mean, seriously, I mean, you know... Um, I think this is a little bit tacky. Frankly, I mean, if Jesus uh, did um, show up and there were a bunch of vampires, he'd just wave his hand and they'd leave. I mean, uh, you know, one thing the New Testament constantly shows, consistently shows, is whenever Jesus showed up, the demons, you know, cowered in fear. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, were, they were scared to death of him and, and, and of his power. Uh, so, I don't know, to me it just strikes me as being a... I know it's a bit silly. I don't know. Kind of like Godzilla versus the Wolfman here or something. It's kind of a goofy idea. Um, I'm not offended. I mean, no. Uh, yeah, one thing I, I've learned is, you know, if there's uh, money to be made in Jesus' name, people are going to make it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, uh uh, the Weinstein brothers, I was just reading the other day, are, are making a movie about the life of Billy Graham. Be quiet and watch the film. Sorry. You know, okay. Uh, I mean, Harvey Weinstein, I mean, you know, best known, you know, last quote religious movie he was known for releasing was Dogma. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a name like Weinstein, he doesn't um, sound like he was born into a Christian family at least. Uh-huh. That's, uh, Not that there aren't Christian Jews out there, but you know. Yeah, they, he was the are. founder of. Um, they were the founders of Miramax Studios, and so I mean, I mean that people are going to make a buck out of Jesus, um, and I just don't think. All right, now I'll let, I'll let God deal with these guys. You know, I'm not going to sit there and try and deal with them. I don't know what uh-huh. to say. Now here's a question: What if? They did a Muhammad versus the Vampires um, comic book. Yeah, we're in trouble. Something tells me that would not go over too well. No, that wouldn't. Of course, showing him uh, throwing a sword around would actually be a lot more historically accurate. I mean, not against vampires, obviously, but, um, you know, Muhammad was well known for being a, um, you know, throwing a sword around and, and, uh, you know, he was a military guy with Jesus. Jesus won the battle, not by shedding the blood of others, but by shedding his own blood. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's goofy. It's, um, it's definitely not something that I would pay to see. I'm not going to go out and buy the... If I'm going to go out and buy a, a, a graphic novel or a trade paperback, um, the, the next one that I want to get is uh, the... What's it called? Beyond the Labyrinth, 
which is based on the, the Jim Henson Labyrinth movies. Yep. That I'd actually like to get my hands on. But uh, this one, not really interested. But, yeah, it's, you know, I, I saw this. It caught my eye as a, as a comic book fan and as a, <laughs> as a Jesus fan and uh, as a vampire fan. But, I, you know, this, this Jesus, put it this way, this Jesus is really, uh, I'd say, toned down um from the the real Jesus. You know, he's a this one's a wimp. Yes, they did. But maybe you think we're crazy. Maybe you sit there and think you people should be a lot more offended than you are by that. Um Maybe get an opinion on something else. Maybe you want to go to atheist camp. Uh whatever. Uh Maybe think we should go to Atheist Camp. <laughs> you can give us your comments at CrossFeed at, uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. I still think the other one, CrossFeed at Gmail. Uh, Gmail they actually com. both go to the same place. <laughs> okay. Well, one of my members the other day said, how many email addresses do you have? I said, four of them, but they all go to the same computer, so don't worry about it. They'll show up yeah. on my desktop. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I have, I have two different computers, and uh, half the time, you know, a lot of times the it, the message goes to the wrong one just because still configuring things with new servers kind of has a weird way of handling email. But um, but yeah, yeah, we'd love to hear from. You. Oh, hey, did you see we got a review? No, I did not. Yeah, at iTunes, Faith. Um. That's just the name that, that that's their faith, and um, and I, I'm I'm guessing it's uh, she. So uh, faith, correct us if we're wrong. Um, she said this is my favorite religious podcast, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh, it was on the audio, so now we have a uh, like the 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 first one was like two stars, and and she gave us five stars, so that averages out. Um, you know a little higher now <laughs> kind of balances out and um and and she said we're snarky <laughs> i take it that that's a good thing coming from her <laughs> yeah apparently <laughs> so that yeah check it out that made my day so if anybody else wants to um send us a review hold on a second i just got unplugged <clears throat> Off the cord. Yeah, I still hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, but all of a sudden it went a little dimmer. And if I'm running off a battery, sometimes I have problems with uh, doing things like video. Um, but yeah, we'd love to. Anybody else uh, want to put a review up on iTunes or anywhere else? We would absolutely love that. Um, and. That's all I have this week. Uh, I certainly can't think of anything else either. Uh, do pray God would watch over everybody out there and uh, uh, be blessed in the Lord and in, in his goodness this week. And uh, please, uh, you know, as we think of uh, some of the many disasters around the world, you know, uh, we have a lot of fun here, but I mean, Dale's been dealing with the floods. Uh, people in Miramar, um, earthquakes Myanmar. in China, you know, uh, encourage you uh, very much to please think about uh, giving and supporting and, and sharing the good things that we have with them. Yeah, yeah, there was, we had tornadoes come through, you know, well, last week we talked about the tornadoes um, while that was going on. And some of you probably even heard about this because it did make the national news. Uh, Parkersburg, Iowa, uh, was one of the cities that was just completely destroyed. Um, I think it was like two thirds of the town was just leveled. I, I've seen footage of it and stuff and it's, I, I can't imagine what that's like to go through that. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll plug a couple organizations if you're looking to help out one of these various places. Um, of course, the Red Cross, you know, 
they're always out there. Uh, Lutheran World Relief, we've mentioned, um, they do a lot of, of good work. Um, also mentioned LCMS World Relief. I'll also mention Lutheran Church Charities, which is, uh, not very well known. They're based out of the Chicago area. And, um, any, anything given to Lutheran Church Charities, every penny that you give goes directly to, um, to whatever you, you pick whatever your, um, whatever charity that you want to give to, whatever, uh, cause that they're out of the different ones that they're supporting. And, um, they don't have, their overhead costs are all paid by separate donations that are given just to handle their overhead. So that every penny that you give, none of it goes to administrative fees. It all goes to whatever you give to. The ladies from our church make quilts. They give them to Lutheran Church Charities, and um, we've got somebody, one of their kids lives not too far from there, drops off the quilts. We're able to put the name of the church in a Bible verse on these quilts, and um, they ship them down to the areas that are still recovering from uh, the the hurricanes. Uh, was it Katrina and, and that? And um, And so they're still shipping quilts and stuff down there. And, um, and they always do it through what they do is they send it to the local churches and let the churches distribute the stuff. And so that connects the people to a church. Um, it's not just, you know, somebody in a truck handing stuff out. It's, it enables the churches down there to go. And, and so that way, not only do they bring relief, but they can bring the gospel at the same time. So it's a really cool program. Um, I interviewed the head of it, Tim Hetzner, um, back when I was doing the Lutheran Weekly podcast. I know Tim. I've met him a couple of times. So anyway, uh, really, just just be thinking of them and, and things. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun to be here, and as Faith says, be snarky. But uh, there are people out there in the world who are suffering and hurting, and I think we need to put our plugs in for them, too, now and then. So... Yep. God give you all a beautiful week in his grace, uh, and we will see you next week. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless.